<laughs> it's just so nice out today. It's a high of 76 instead of like 90. Finally, be free little kitty. But today we are taking a little bit of a break on this gal and working instead on this girl. That's not my blue Miata, by the way. That's my friends. Just ignore that. We've been focusing a lot on the super... Oh, I almost stepped on my cat. We've been focusing a lot on the supercharger build for this car, and it's going really well. I'm having a ton of fun. But um, I've kind of neglected this car a little bit. It's It's got some things that need to be a little, little, little worked on. The main focus is going to be working on the rear end of the car, getting it looking a little nicer. I've always been super happy about how the front of this car looked, but um, I've never been super happy about the rear. I don't know, it's, it's look, it looks a little like cheap and stuff. And I think one of the main reasons of that is that I never painted this thing. It's just the plastic color and it, it doesn't look great. So what I'm gonna do today is we're gonna paint this to color match the car. Um, I'm gonna see if I like that. Otherwise, I'll paint it like gloss black. And then we're also going to do a bumper cut so we can see the beautiful exhaust. And so that bumper doesn't act as like a parachute. We are also going to be fixing uh, some of the idling issues, hopefully with the car uh, and doing, doing some maintenance. So yeah, before we get started with anything, talk about anything or whatever, I'm gonna pull this uh, spoiler off and start painting it because we need to do primer, base coat and clear coat. So we've got a lot of painting to do and that's gonna take a lot of time to dry. So I wanna get started right away. I just found this nasty ass ginormous lo locust, cricket ass thing. Thing's giant. Ooh. So what happens when you hit boost too hard, boys. Boost kills. <laughs> oh fuck, it's still moving. Oh God. Sorry, buddy. Oh. I mean, that kinda worked. It looks so weird without a spoiler. It's like way too round and... Ugh, ugh. Hey, whoa, do you guys recognize this car? What the heck? That is, that, that looks... Oh! Oh! eBay, what you doing? That's my car, bro. Oh look, they even like blocked out my license plate. How nice of them. Oh, thanks for stealing my picture, bud. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, so now we're gonna paint it, so yeah. I hate the wind. We are gonna get ready to perform a bumper cut. Now a bumper cut is pretty much where you cut out a bottom portion of the rear bumper on Miatas. The thing is that this rear bumper kind of acts as like a parachute and it sucks up a ton of air and makes you go slower. I mean, makes you go slower, supposedly. Uh, it also just doesn't look very good and it looks a lot better if you cut it right. Some people cut too much and they cut like all the way up here and it looks terrible. So we're just gonna do like a nice clean bumper cut that goes along this bottom line right here. Five and a half inches from the line on the bumper all the way around. The next step is to go ahead and cut it out. But before this spoiler is ready to start turning blue, go away, go away. That's wet paint, don't touch it, don't touch it. I'm completely covered in melted plastic, but the uh, the cut has been made. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you. Oh! Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. Oh, fuck! I'm so happy. Um, now. As you can tell, you can see the bumper support underneath there. So now what we have to do is we have to take off the entire bumper and then chop the bumper support. It's okay. It's not correct. Finally, 
this comes off. Yeah, yeah. Now instead of taking this guy off, trimming it, putting it back on, we actually have a bash bar to install. So let's just go ahead and rip this thing off. Ooh. This goes to the trash. Yeah. It's all tight on there. And it can definitely support our weight. Plus this one has a jacking point, so we can jack it up and down from that now. Hallelujah. This is all gonna be hidden underneath the bumper anyway. All right, so now this guy's gonna go back on. It just rests perfectly on the uh, bash bar there. It's 4.30, perfect time for breakfast. You know, the funny thing is, I'm not joking. This is my breakfast and I'm eating it at 4.30 p.m. Mm. I'm really hungry. Leave, rice. This thing seriously just looks so much meaner back here. This is exactly what I wanted. You can see the beautiful exhaust, the bash bar, it just, it looks so much meaner. I don't know, oh, like meatier and just, oh, it looks so good. Oh, that was so good. I might actually end up trimming those sometime down the line. Except that's a, that's a project for an angle grinder, which I don't feel like getting out right now. So now, as many of you guys know, this car has a small idling issue. Once it warms up and you've been driving it for a while, the idle starts getting pretty lean. When this first started happening, I thought it was a tune issue. It just doesn't idle quite right. So I messed with the tune, I fanned up the idle, and it kind of helped, right? It, the, the AFRs were a little bit better. Um, I'll play a clip of what happens right now. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's getting down to 19, that's terrible. It idles at like 200 RPMs and jumps back up to like 1,000 and it's like at like 17, 18, and 19 AFR. But after thinking about it more, I realized that all that's happening is it's misfiring at idle, so it's gotta be spark plugs, right? Otherwise, it is a tune issue. Um, that's very possible, but I feel like this is it. When I first got the car back from the tuner, it idled great, and then it just kind of got leaner and leaner as the, the weeks went on. So um, I'm hoping the spark plugs are just kind of going bad. I got some of these sick V-Power um, NGK spark plugs, so hopefully those are good. These look like they're in pretty perfect condition, so, hmm. I'm gonna gap the new spark plugs to 0 .03. That's what uh, the Car Passion Channel recommends, so. 0 .031. If you're wondering about spark plug gaps, the very general consensus is that um, the more power your engine makes, the smaller the gap you want it to be. When a spark plug has a smaller gap, it creates a short, intense spark, and when it has a bigger gap, it creates a longer, weaker spark. Put anti seize on it, and just drop her in. Well, it's running, so that's good. Uh, I don't really know if it fixed it until I can take it for a drive, so we'll figure that out later. The spoiler is done being painted, and as you can tell, the color matches amazingly, but um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's very orange peely. And if I put this on the car, it's gonna look terrible and make it look like the orange peel mobile. I don't wanna look like the orange peel mobile, so I'm gonna go to the store, get some 2000 grit sandpaper, and wet sand the shit out of it, and then maybe do a clear coat. Got the goods. 
and I wet sanded this. It's nice and smooth now, but it needs to be clear coated, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. You know how I put the new spark plugs in to fix the idling issue? Didn't do anything, so um, hopefully getting a better tune will fix that. Um, but yeah, stuck with it for now. guys it is the next day let's have some fun So guys, I think that's gonna be it for today. We did a bumper cut, we painted the spoiler, and we installed a bash bar. Pretty much just overhauled the rear end of this car. I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking it so much. You can't really see because it's the stupid sun right now. I just think the rear end of this car is looking like so much more aggressive, so much cleaner with a painted spoiler. Um, I, I like the black, and you know, the black matched and everything, but it was like an unpainted black, and it, it just didn't look good. I think this blue looks a lot better, even though it is kind of orange peely. The bash bar is really awesome. I do want to get rid of these two doohickeys, that one over there, that one over there. No, it's really nice out here today, too. It's really awesome. I'm, I'm happy that summer is coming to an end. As sad as it is, I drive three cars without working AC and summer is not fun. I'm tired of being sweaty and hot and just having like a nice cool day. Like this is perfect, 70s, perfect. Why can't we have this every day? I don't know, but um, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you still enjoy videos with Molly because she is just a turbo Miata and I know there are a lot of turbo Miatas out there, but out of my three cars, this is probably the favorite. Um, it was also like my first car, so I mean, that makes sense. I'm never gonna get rid of her. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the videos with her as well. I I'd like to think that she's one of the cleaner Miatas out there. Can you guys believe that this is factory paint? All right, this paint is from 29 years ago and look at how good it looks. There are some dings in some spots and there are some scratches in some spots, but overall the condition of this paint is, uh, it is just amazing. It's 29 years old. So it was painted in 1989 and oh, it's still like, so good. I got really lucky with Molly because the previous two or three owners took really good care of her. Now a spot of rust, super clean car. Um, I'm getting really off topic, so we're gonna end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed, like. If you didn't, dislike and tell me why. I'm always open to constructive criticism. Um, it's just that that first word that you kind of have to pay attention to tomorrow We will be resuming uh, working on the rail Miata getting the ECU in and then we're ready to drive it So I'm pretty excited for that. Hopefully you guys are too. Thanks so much and goodbye Love it's what makes a Molly a Molly. More than a car. It's a Molly.